Annapurna and she's coming from Center of Cellular and Molecular Biology, CCMB Hyderabad basically. Um, and uh, she's a PhD student there at Epigenetics and Neuropsychiatric Disorders Lab. Exciting. Uh, and she's going to talk about uh, Sabka's favorite topic, depression. Guys excited? Yeah! That's my people. Long <laughs> depression All right. This is not the first time I'm staying away from home. The first time I moved away from home, well, it was to do my masters. I moved from Mumbai to Gujarat. So this was me in Mumbai, graduation days, living my best life. And then I moved to Gujarat, and this was me back there. So without even realizing it much back then, in my first few months of masters, I lost almost 10 kgs. Okay, and only much later, I processed exactly how much stress I was in at the time. But thankfully, with the help of my family from a distance and of my uh, friends and professors at the university, I was able to deal with the stress and things turned out okay for me. Uh, in fact, after my ma masters, I got back home and I managed to gain all of the lost weight and a little extra. So, but you know, there are situations where stress can be really, really difficult to cope with. And it is in these situations that it can have long-term impact, not just on our physical health, but also on our mental health. Too much stress for too long can make people susceptible to neuropsychiatric disorders, including depression. Now, depression is heavily prevalent in our population. Four crore Indians have depression. And it is not easy living and functioning with a disorder like depression. Imagine not being able to feel happy or satisfied no matter what you do. So it has a huge impact on life and livelihood. And unfortunately, whatever medications we currently have for depression, they don't work very well. So we need to come up with better medications. And to do that, we need to understand depression very well. And unfortunately, as of today, we don't entirely understand it. What we do know is that there is a good association between stress and depression. Stress doesn't always lead to depression, but the association is compelling enough which got people questioning, what does stress do? What's happening? So it turns out that stress can actually alter your brains. It can affect the genes in your brain. And by genes, I mean those bits that you inherit from your parents, your DNA. So everybody knows the DNA. We have all associated so much importance to it. It's like the be-all and end-all of life. What you inherit from your parents is what you live with. But let me tell you something, that's not the entire picture. Your genes are important, yes, but they are simply a rough plan of how your body will function. And there are many players which call the shots on how this plan will be executed. And one of those are these proteins called as histones. So these histones, they are, well, they are tiny proteins which sit in your cells, constantly holding on to your DNA, just like overprotective parents. And just like the children of the overprotective parents, the genes are not free to do whatever they want. So for a gene to function, it needs to form a protein. And these histones, they regulate how much protein your genes can form. Okay, and yet again, like overprotective parents, these histones get heavily influenced by the society or the environment at large. Whatever you eat, see or experience can alter the state of your histones. So, well, histones are proteins, right? So they can acquire or lose some chemical groups like acetyl group or methyl group. I won't go into the details of that. Just remember, methyl groups. So in response to the environment stimuli, like, like stress, these chemical changes on histones, they, they undergo a huge change. So we call them chemical marks. Okay? So we have a few pieces of the puzzle here. You have stress, you have your brain. So in response to stress, your histone chemical marks change. So all these changes that happen around your DNA, but can still affect the function of the DNA, all this uh, we fancily call it epigenetic or epigenetic changes. So stress leads to histone related epigenetic changes in the brain, which leads to a change in your genes function, making, which can make your brain more susceptible to depression. Now, knowing that histone modification can decide the course of depression, we can target these changes to come up with better medication. But to do that, we need to understand exactly where these changes are happening and what are all the factors involved. And that's where my research comes in. 
So in my lab, we go into the details of the brain. We look at the histones, we look at the genes, and we try to understand what is happening in de depression. And that requires me to work with the brain. Now for obvious reasons, I can't do that with the human brain. I can't walk around asking people for a sample of their brain. So instead, I work with mice. So despite the obvious differences between a human and a mouse, there are also similarities. Just like us, mice and even other animals, they can get stressed. Just like us, they can develop conditions like depression. So we model depression in mice and we try to understand what is happening in the brain. So in my study with mice, what I've found is that we've identified this new protein in the brain. Uh, the function of this protein is to remove the chemical methyl marks from the histone. So proteins similar to this one are already known and some of them are known to have brain functions. But the one that I am studying is somehow it has remained in the dark and we have evidence to show that in response to stress in the brain of mice, this, the level of this protein increases in some regions. And also when we increase the level of this protein, the mice get stressed even in the absence, the mice show depression like symptoms even in the absence of any stress. So by understanding this protein further, and by knowing all the factors involved in regulating it, we are hoping to understand depression better and move a teensy bit closer to treating it better. But till I or some other researcher like me uh, comes up with a, a way of manipulating your histones, just remember them as constant companions of your DNA, which are so sensitive to your environment and your stress. So treat your histones well, eat good food, Surround yourself with good people and good vibes and your histones will reward you with better health. That is all from me, folks. Thank you very much. You, you mentioned this just at the end, actually, but I was intrigued. How can I improve the health of my histones? <laughs> so, and, well, and are there hot tones as well? Was another question. Yeah. So, well, the, the point is to reduce stress as much as possible. I know it sounds a lot, it, it's a lot easier said than done, but that's, that's like the bottom line. Don't stress yourself too much and if you do find yourself in stressful conditions, find interventions before it's too late. Yeah. All right. I have, I have a quick question. Okay. Yes, so you can measure histones. How do you measure dep depression itself? We have behavior tests. Like even in humans, the major symptom of depression is not able to feel any pleasure or any reward. So we have behavior tests to test this in mice. For example, we give the mice a choice of regular water and sugar water. So normal wise, mice will drink up all the sugar water, but, but the ones that have been stressed, that have depression-like conditions, they will just drink whatever is provided because they don't get any reward feedback from the sugar. Yeah. Also, one more way is you can check how often they're posting on Instagram. Changes in depression, it's happening within your brain. So if we have to talk in human context, like if I have to measure your histones, I'll have to take a bit of your brain tissue out. That is the current technology we have. Maybe in the future, we'll have a way of looking at histones and other proteins in your brain directly from the outside. Like we have some techniques like brain scans, but we're not yet there. Okay, thank you. Thank you.